my onslaught, how could you let this happen? I had no idea he was going to do it. The last I saw him, he was telephoning. Oh, we must get them right out. Now, come quick here. Open this gate. Quick, hurry up, hurry up. How long does it take you? Wait, wait. Inquiring for Mr. Scott. I'll be in the cocktail lounge. Yes, Mr. Evans. Scott. Well, I said the name was Scott. I get it, sir. Calling Mr. John Evans. Go, boy. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, here, wait a minute. Oh, thank you, Mr. Evans. Ginger ale, Mr. Evans? No, I'll have a scotch and soda, please. What are you staring at? Well, but, but uh, you don't drink, sir. Who said I didn't? You said so. I did, eh? Well, I'll show me a thing or two. There. How many drinks will that buy? That'll, that'll be a little over six drinks, sir. Good. Put them all in one glass. In one glass. That's right. Now, come on, come on, come on. Don't let's make a big thing of this. Put them all in that glass, then. I don't see you again. Hello. to me, Phillips is a skunk. I beg your pardon? Phillips is a... <laughs> is a skunk. Come on, come on, say it. Well, Phillips is a skunk. <laughs> you, you think so too, eh? Well, I'm sorry, I don't think I know Mr. Phillips. There you are, you see, that proves I'm right. But even people who don't know him think that he's a skunk. One sherry. One sherry. Ah. Here. Will, will you do something for me? Well, certainly, Mr. Evans. Repeat after me. Phillips is a skunk. But I don't know, Mr. Phillips. Congratulations. <laughs> come, come on, come on. Let's hear you say it. Phillips is a skunk. <clears throat> Let me tell you what he's doing. Excuse me, I'll be right back. That's all right. I'll go with you. I saw you. <laughs> I think you've had enough, sir. You're not used to it, you know. Well, when I've had enough, I'll be the last to know it. You'll let me be the judge of that. Now, now, where's that waiter, eh? Where did he go? Waiter! Waiter! Waiter, 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 waiter! Waiter! Waiter, 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 waiter! Oh! Hello. <laughs> How are you? Uh, look, uh, I 
I have a story that'll probably bore you stiff, but, but I've got to tell it to somebody. Oh, you, you don't really have to listen, but if you'll just let me tell it to you. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a funny thing. I, I can't quite remember your name. Uh, your face is very familiar. I... My name is Malcolm Scott. Scott Phillips is my partner. Oh. Am I seeing things, or, or are there two of us? No, there are two of us. You mean there's, there's one of, of each of us? That's right. You probably hadn't noticed it, but we look alike, and remarkably so. Uh, uh, <laughs> I knew I recognized you from somewhere. Why, why, do you know when, when I first came in, I was sitting over there by the bar. Malcolm. Oh, Malcolm, I've been so upset ever since you called me. Are you all right? Of course I'm all right. You bet I'm all right. Even though you and everybody else seems to think that I'm... I, I said I wanted to see you alone, didn't I? Well, don't forget, Mr. Collins is your attorney as well as mine. And you said it was serious. I, I thought I ought to bring him along. Of course it's serious. Than that. It's dangerous for you. Hadn't we better sit down? Oh, yes, please. Oh, ah, you don't trust me. That's the trouble. You don't trust me. Uh, I asked to see you alone, and, uh, and you bring him along. Malcolm, dear, of course I trust you. Haven't I always sided with you? Now, oh, please. What is it you have to tell me? You're in danger. I'm in danger. My family's in danger. But what is it? Well, Malcolm, you've got to tell me what is it? You'd really like to know. Heavens, man, haven't you any decency left? You might have a little consideration for Mrs. Scott, especially after the way she's always stood by you. I'll see you at the house if you can manage to come there alone. Malcolm, dear. I said alone. Oh. Let him go, Adrian. I'm sure it's not nearly so serious as you'd have you think. Where are you? Are you there? Mm, are you there? Have you lost something? Huh? Oh, I've been looking for you. Where have you been? I'm sorry, I was called away, but now we can really celebrate. <laughs> well, come on, come on. We must have a drink. Waiter, waiter. No, no, no. The drinks are on me. From now on, you're my guest. <laughs> Good. Let, let's celebrate. Waiter. You know. Scott's my pal. Take him to 1011 Fifth Avenue. Right. Gee, Phillips is a She's a skank. What? Fix you up in a moment, sir. Ah. Nothing could help this head. What's that? Your usual remedy, sir. My usual remedy? But I've never felt like this before in all my life. I know, sir. But this will fix you up, as it always has. I don't know what you're talking about, but hurry. My head's about to take off. What 
do I do now? Drink this, sir. But, but, but why did you throw that other drink away? Because I know it makes you ill to look at it. Well, then why did you mix it in the first place? That's one of your ideas, sir. I never did understand your motive. Look here, what is this, a gag or something? Gag, sir. Oh. Oh, never mind. Forget about it. Forget it. Where's my friend? Your friend, sir? Yes, the chap I came home with last night. Oh, please, please stop repeating everything I say. Don't understand, sir. Now, look, let's get this straight. Suppose you answer my questions, eh? Now, are you ready? Yes, sir. Yes, all right. Now, this house belongs to... It belongs to you, sir. It belongs to me. Yes, sir. No, no, no. Don't confuse me. What's my name? Your name? Your name is Scott, sir. Malcolm Scott. My name is Malcolm Scott. Yes. Oh, well. Very glad to meet me. No, please, sir, you, you must be right. I am sure you have been under quite a strain at your home. A home? What home? Shall we see your other home? Yes. Yes, let's, let's say my other home. Let's say all my other homes. <laughs> Of course, you know I have another home. That's not for me to say, sir. Now, tell me something more about my other home, do. No, sir, I'm sorry. My doctor seems to ask me never to discuss it with you. Oh. Oh, oh I see. You think I'm Scott. You're bad as ever, sir. <laughs> well, Scott thought that I was Scott, and he was Scott. Yes. There's no reason you shouldn't think that yes. I'm Scott, if Scott thought so, is there? Yes. <laughs> That's very really good for you. <laughs> oh, and voila. Oh. Ooh. Ah. Won't you join me? Thank you, sir. No? Very well. Make yourself comfortable. I'll be through in no time. Hello? Dr. Sims? How is Mr. Scott feeling this morning? If I may say so, I think it has been very good for him to stay home. Because he... Just, just a moment. Telephone, sir. Oh, for me? Yes, sir. Oh. Hello? Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Hey, hey, put that... Oh, excuse me. Hello, hello, what? Oh, I feel fine. How are you this morning? Fine, fine. Is there anything I can do for you? Are you comfortable? No, thanks. No, your man's taking care of me. Say, this is some shack you have here. Shack? Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, you caused me quite a bit of excitement last night. Are you sure you're feeling all right? Well, as well as can be expected. And how do you feel? <laughs> Good. That makes it unanimous. Take things easy. I suggest a good breakfast, huh? Sounds good to me. I'll see you as soon as I finish this shot. Good. <laughs> Hello there, Scott. Uh, would you mind turning on the hot water? Nice fit, sir. Oh, yes, they fit all right, but, but what have you done with my clothes? We are saving them, in case you want to call the police. Police? Now, what for? About the crook who robbed you last night. Police? Crook? Paul, what are you talking about? We don't know what happened. Shall I call the police? No, don't, don't. I'll talk to Mr. Scott about it. Uh, good morning. Uh, could you tell me where I could find some uh, breakfast? Oh. Good morning. It's a beautiful morning, isn't it? Has uh, Mr. Scott come down yet?
was hangover than I had. The mail, sir. Hmm? No, no, those are not for me. Those are for Mr. Scott. Y yes, sir. Where is Mr. Scott? I'm only a guest here. At least I, I think I'm a guest. Pardon me, sir. Aren't you going to finish your breakfast? No, no, I don't want any more. Uh, shall I take the mail into the library, sir? Oh, he's there. No, no, I'll take it to him myself. Well. Could you tell me where the library is? It's just where it's always been, sir. They, um, they change things around here so much. Uh, would you be good enough to show it to me? and I'm not coming back. What? I've done all I can for you, but I won't put up with your conduct any longer. Look you went to Dr. Sims of your own free will, and you wouldn't stay there. You've insulted people with your practical no. jokes. Look. You've dragged our family name into the gutter. No, I... I'm ashamed to be known as your sister. Look here, I'm not your brother. In... Mr. Scott, your bun's over. I'm getting out of here. Mr. Scott, you have it, you have it. Oh, yes, yes, my hand, of course, come on. Come on, hurry, hurry, hurry. Let's fry up, fry up, fry up. Hey, hey, you better shut this door quickly before the squirrels get in here. Squirrels. 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 So it's you. Uh, yes, it is me, isn't it? I might have known. Oh, I'm awfully sorry. It was all my fault. You see, my mind doesn't seem to be functioning properly. I've been aware of that for quite some time. Oh, have you now? Well, I didn't think it was that noticeable. But this is more of your so-called humor. It doesn't strike me in the least bit funny. Oh, no, no. You don't understand. I understand perfectly. Were you going someplace? Uh, no. As a matter of fact, I just escaped from a nut factory. Well, I'm on my way to the house. Will you be there? Uh... Well, yes, yeah, certainly. <laughs> Gladly. I hope you notice that I'm alone, since you seem to prefer it that way. Oh, wonderful. Well, makes it so much easier, don't you think? Well, I you haven't think? much time, so please don't keep me waiting. Oh, no, no, not at all. <laughs> I'll be right over. <laughs> John Evans. Here, come with me. I want to talk to you. Yes, sir. Now, now, look here. Look here. You think that I'm Malcolm Scott, don't you? <laughs> well, I'm not. Malcolm Scott is dead. Oh, you mean your other self? I have no other self. I'm John Evans. Malcolm Scott was an entirely different person. Oh, we know, sir. It's the divine soul divorcing itself from the cloak of the devil. <laughs> it's no such thing. We're two entirely different people. We understand, sir. Everybody has two souls, one good and one bad. An angel and the devil. 
Oh, poor dear. Oh. It seems such a short time ago that it was a mere thought with his big blue eyes and his rosy chubby cheeks. And he had the longest curls. Oh, blonde they were. I never had any curls. That is down to my shoulder. Do you remember the Christmas when his father bought him the little pony and cart? The only pony and cart I ever had was a soapbox on wheels I made for myself. He used to use it for delivering newspapers. How patient his father was during the escapade, settling those two breach of promise to. I was only one of his little practical Now, jokes. look, you all of you, you've got me wrong. I never promised to marry anybody. I never had any escapades. My father never had to settle anything. I am not the same man. Oh, Mr. Scott, Mr. Scott! Mr. Oh, please, oh, please, please, oh, please. Oh, oh. Oh, hello again. <laughs> well, this is a surprise. How on earth did you find me? Good morning, Mrs. Scott. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Mrs. Scott. Good morning, Mrs. Scott. Mrs. Scott. I, uh, I didn't do anything. I merely asked them if they knew who I was, and then the first thing I knew, the poor old lady burst into tears. Good heavens, you surely don't think that I... I... You don't believe me, Malcolm, do you? you don't have to explain to me. I know you too well. You don't know me at all. I'm not Malcolm. And how often have I heard that? I'm not Malcolm Scott. He's dead. I'm a new man. It is the truth. I'm not. Oh, you'll never be different. Won't you be sensible? Oh, please, please, will you please let me try to explain before I lose my mind no, entirely? No, you've gone through this too many times. But, Mrs. Scott, I... You don't have to be sarcastic now. You can call me Adrian. There's no reason why we can't still be friends. Look, please. And now, Malcolm, when you ran away from the home last night and asked me to meet you, I should have known that it was just your pride. It's always been a case of just your pride. Well, that's why you married me, so no one else could have me. I don't have to tell you all the embarrassing situations you placed me in, flaunting your amours and your conquests, throwing away your inheritance, dissipating not only your own fortune, but your family's as well. Yes, and even part of mine. Well, Malcolm, I've made my decision. Since I can't help you, I, I don't want to hurt you. Therefore, you're free to do exactly as you please. From now on, we're literally husband and wife and name only. A condition to which I'm sure you've become accustomed long before this. Oh, have you anything to say? I think you're wonderful. What? Oh. Scott, since it seems you wanted it that way, I believe I'm going to enjoy living your life for a while. Frank de Soto, Mr. Bowles' man is here again. Shall I send him in? Frank de Soto, Mr. Bowles' man? Yes, sir. I hate that funny. Follow my advice and squeeze him. Squeeze him? Yes, sir. Your attorney gave you the same advice. Oh, all right, all right. Send him in. I'll squeeze him. Fine. Yes, sir. Oh, come in, come in. How are you? <laughs> uh, sit down, sit down. Oh, uh, oh yes, yes. Uh, have a cigar? Oh, thank you. Well, then, uh, what, uh, what can I do for you? I'm sure you're anxious to clear up this little matter. Oh, yeah. I certainly am anxious to clear it up. <laughs> I feel that all little matters should be cleared up. Sure, that's right. It's taken some time for our little matter to get itself uh, straightened out. Yeah, uh, since the full amount has been just $10,000. Well, uh, still, uh, conditions being what they are... Well, that's uh, why Mr. volley has been patient about the last $2,000. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, well, I... I certainly do appreciate Mr. Vole's attitude. Uh, the last $2,000, you said. Sure, you got the letters. The lady's husband is none the wiser. And we all have been satisfied. Oh, uh, uh, yes. The lady's husband doesn't see the letters. Mr. Bowles gets $10,000, and we're all uh, satisfied. Um, oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I, uh, I don't suppose you have those letters with you by any chance? You don't think Mr. Bowles will let me carry that dynamite around with me? Oh, do you? <laughs> you just hand over the 2000 you'll get the letters. Ah, uh, but how can I be sure? You know you can trust Mr. Bowles. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Uh, this, um... This country's been very good to you, hasn't it? Why? Well, yes, this country's been very good to me. Hmm. I suppose when a person is anxious to enter it, uh, he sometimes forgets the uh, legal requirements for entering this country. You can't prove nothing. 
just guessing. Ah, uh, you can't scare me. Oh, no, I'm not trying to scare you. <laughs> oh, hello. Would you give me the number of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, please? I won't do no good. You're, you're just wasting your time. Uh, thank you, thank you. Well, when I get an idea, I just like to go through with it. <laughs> I'm rather stubborn that way, you know. Hello? Hello? Huh? Hello, FBI? FBI? Isn't you? It's Paul. It's Paul? You can't get away with this. Mr. Bowles will have these letters printed in every newspaper in this country. Would you be good enough to look up your files, please? I should like to find out if a man named... Oh, what's your name? Frank DeSoto. If a man named Frank DeSoto entered this country illegally. I got my citizen papers. I was... No, I, I was over there in the office. Upstairs and downstairs in the middle in... Two witnesses, two witnesses, my brother and my cousin, and the lawyer and my, the whole, fa the whole family. I took my examination, I undersigned it, and fingerprinted. What else can I do? No, that won't be necessary. No, he's right here with me. I won't let him get away. Please, Mr. Scott, please don't do that. I got a wife and a kid. And besides, I, I owe my bookmaker lots of money. I, I can't quit playing horses. I'm only human. But I love America. Please, Mr. Scott, please. Uh, hold on just a minute, will you? Oh, well, blackmail's a very serious offense, you know. Yes. Oh, all right, sit down, sit down, sit down, write what I tell you. I call my lord, call my brother and my cousin. He can't do that. That Mr. Bowles is holding some letters belonging to Malcolm Scott. I can't do that. You know what Mr. Bowles will do to me? Oh, please don't do that. Oh, well, hello, hello, is that? All right, I'll do it. Oh, all right, thank you, thank you very much. I'll call you back in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. I thought he was all right already. Bowles has also collected $8,000, which I delivered to him. How many L's have delivered? One L, one L. One no, 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 sign it. Frank. Just over. That's right, that's right. Now, I'll send Paul around in the morning to the letters and a check for $8,000. And mind you, see that Mr. Bowles gives it to him. I will. Now, come on, get out, get out. I, I feel weak. You get me a little brandy? What? A little brandy. My Brand. throat. Oh, all right, all right. I'll fix you up. Oh, no. Please. Please. <laughs> Adrian, we may disagree on my qualifications to ask you, but I must know. Are you still in love with your husband? No. Definitely not. Adrian, my darling. Adrian, I'll make you happy, I promise you. Let me make up for this misery you have known. Look, you're one of the finest men that a woman could know. Oh, I don't see what I would have done without your friendship. But under the circumstances, I think it's probably best we didn't see each other anymore. I, I feel I owe you that. <laughs> you may as well know it, but I'm your bad penny. And as long as you will stand for it, I will always be around. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, uh, I beg your pardon. I'm afraid I'm intruding. Uh, I had something I wanted to discuss with Mrs. Scott, but it uh, doesn't seem to be very important now, so uh, uh, I think I'll be running along. <laughs> Let me give you a piece of advice. Don't you go running around after other men's wives. And another thing, any time you leave a woman alone and you think you're going to find her sitting around waiting for you brokenheartedly, you've got another thing coming. What was that? What happened? Here, there, look. Which is the emergency thing? I... Oh, I'll just get out of it. Oh, did you do that? Yes. What did you want? Well, I, I just dropped by to tell you the news. It's about Bowles. I'm not interested in anything that concerns that matter. I don't want to hear about it. Uh, but everything's been straightened out. We have a perfect understanding. I'm sure you two should get along splendidly together. You have so much in common. See what I mean? Here I am, the betrayed husband, when I'm neither betrayed nor a husband. Ah, Phillips was a skunk. Scott was evidently a fool. I'm not doing so well myself.
there are two gentlemen in the library for you. Paul, get me my clothes. I'm getting out of here. You are not taking a trip? Yes, a long trip. I'm going to swim back to Puerto Rico. But they said it was very important. There are a couple of investigators. Investigators? Mm -hmm. Mm. Ah, you, uh, you wish to see me? Oh, yes, Mr. Scott. We represent the Consolidated Insurance Company. We're looking for a little information. Oh, uh, sit down, will you? No, thanks. How well did you know John Evans? Well, uh, uh, John, uh, John Evans? According to our information, you spent last night together, celebrating. Oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, I remember John Evans. Yes, yes, nice chair. He uh, shouldn't drink, though. <laughs> Gets himself into all kinds of trouble when he does. He certainly got himself into plenty of trouble last night. Oh? He's dead. No. Really? That's right. It happened at the 59th Street subway station. Killed instantly. Oh, awful. But, um, how could I possibly help you? Well, we're not sure that he is dead. In fact, we're not definitely sure that the victim is really Evans. And until we make positive identification, we can't pay off his accident policy. His accident policy? Huh? It's ridiculous. I'd have had... Uh, I mean, uh, Evans uh, couldn't possibly have had an accident policy. Why, why, he's broke. We know that. That's why we're investigating. Even if he had, you you surely don't think that he'd kill himself just to collect his own insurance. No, but then we have had several cases where someone takes out a big policy on somebody else. Then the first thing you know, that somebody else finds himself popped off. Oh. You, you say that Evans was heavily insured. But, uh, who would be his beneficiary? A uh, Harold Phillips in Puerto Rico. Uh, Phillips, eh? Uh, uh, let me ask you. Supposing that were a mistake and Phillips had collected that insurance while Evans was still alive, what would happen to Phillips? Nothing to Phillips, but about 20 years to Evans. 20? What, what, even if he didn't know anything about it? Oh, no, Mr. Scott, didn't you ever hear of conspiracy? Get a copy of the guest list at Sing Sing sometime. Uh, so... So if Evans is dead, Phillips can collect that insurance. But if Evans is alive, Evans has to go to the penitentiary. Now you're catching on. Oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes, it's uh, funny the way the law works sometimes, isn't it? <laughs> yes, um, no, no, gentlemen, I'm afraid I can't tell you anything about Mr. Evans. I just uh, had a drink with him, left each other, and that was all. I, We're sorry to have troubled you, Mr. Scott. Oh, thank you very much. Not at all. Yes, <laughs> we need you again. We'll call on you. Oh, any time, any time. <laughs> Goodbye, gentlemen. Goodbye. Goodbye. Scott, old man, you certainly fixed me up. If I go on taking your place, I'll probably wind up in an asylum. And if I don't go on taking your place, I'll wind up in a penitentiary. Scott, Evans, Evans, Evans. Scott? Scott, Scott, Scott. Look out, Scott. Look out, they're after Evans. They're after Evans. Scott, they're after. Scott, 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 Scott. Scott, I tell you, Scott. Ah, 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 take that rope off my neck. Don't let me on the straight jacket. Paul, it's me, Paul. Paul, Paul. 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 Oh, hello, Paul. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Did you sleep well? Very well. Very well, thank you. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, Paul, it's, it's good to be alive. Very good. Please. This is what you asked me to fetch from Mr. Bowles. Huh? Please. Oh, oh, Scott's folly. Eh? Ha ha. You have no trouble with Bowles? No. I called Mrs. Scott and told her what you did. Did, eh? She was very happy. Oh, she's pleased with me, is she? Yeah. Oh, so am I. My own sweet, darling, booby wooby. Booby wooby. Good heavens. Ten thousand dollars to keep this hidden. It was worth it. Paul, I'll give you a piece of advice. Never read another man's letters. That goes for me, too. Mrs. Van Avery is in the library to see you, sir. Mrs. Van Avery? Yes, sir. Booby wooby. Ah. Oh, Nellie, darling, I'm so glad to see you. Why, you look wonderful, simply wonderful. I came the moment I heard you were back. Well, booby, booby. <laughs> I tried to see you at that horrid place, but they wouldn't let me in. Oh, really? 
Mary, darling, don't look so solemn. There, now, come sit down. Hmm? You must rest. Yes, dear. <laughs> Darling, aren't you glad to see me? Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Mally, precious. I'm in a tight place. Oh? Hmm? Yes, in a very tight place. I've got to have some money. Oh. And I've got to have it today. Today? I wouldn't trouble you, but I was expecting some money yesterday and was disappointed. You were expecting some money yesterday? Yes, it was most annoying. But when I heard you were back, I knew that Mally would take care of Booby Wooby. You will, won't you, Booby? Oh, well. I only need $2,000. $2,000? $2, yes, sweetie pie. Mom's in his just an inch, wincy $2,000. Hmm. Oh. Hey! Hey! Oh! Whoa! 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 You stop just a minute. Look, look. I know what you're thinking, but you're wrong. I might have known I'd find you occupied in just such a manner. I was only trying to help you. Whenever I need help like that, I'll let you know. Oh, but you're all wrong. Oh, I'm sure of that now. When I heard how you handled bold, I thought that you were coming to your senses. But I see you haven't. Yeah, I'm not the man that you think I am. No, I'm afraid you never were. Oh, surely you're not worried about that. Oh, it isn't only Booby Wooby. It's always someone. Before her was that Countess. And last year was that bubble dancer. I've never known a bubble dancer in my oh, life. Oh, no. Well, you better take another look at that picture up in your bedroom. What's that she's holding, a grape? You don't understand. You know, uh, you really shouldn't leave Booby Wooby all alone in the library. She might get frightened by a book. Mally, darling, come along. Don't let her upset you. Hibby, darling, you're making me jealous. You know, I do believe, in spite of what you've told me, you're still in love with your wife. Now, you want $2,000, eh? <laughs> yes, Mally, darling. What sort of a deal was it that fell through yesterday? Malcolm, what on earth's wrong with you? Just this. You heard from Bones yesterday that I wouldn't come across. He's your partner, and you've been paying him his share. You, you, you can't say things like that to me. There isn't a word of truth in it. I tell you, he's been lying. He's been lying. Bones didn't give me that information. I see. You're trying to trick me. I'm the one person who's always defended you. But now I see you're the cat everybody says. You found your way into this house, Mrs. Van Avery. I think you know the way out. Why, you? You? I can help you, you if you like. Oh! Goodbye, Booby Wooby. Mr. Cullings is on the telephone, sir. Eh? Hey, what? Who? Mr. Frederick Cullings, your attorney. Mr. Frederick Collins, my attorney? Yes. Oh, all right, I'll see him. Pardon, sir, he's on the telephone. In the study. Oh, oh, oh yes, yes, all right. Hello? Hello, Malcolm. Could you stop in for a moment? I must talk to you. It's very important. Oh, yes, yes, certainly, Mr. Collins. Yes, sir. Uh, I'll be right over. Right. Paul, uh, uh, will you get my hat, please? Yes, sir. Uh, Paul, is Mr. Collins' office still in the Rockefeller um, radio, uh, uh, that, that building? He's in the Equitable building. 120 Broadway. Oh, yes, yes, the Equitable. There, that's right. Uh, by the way, uh, Mrs. Scott calls, and I'm sure she won't. Uh, tell her where I am, will you? Yes, sir. evening. Mrs. Van Avery must be busy. Oh, I think that episode is ended. Tell her, tell her that I can explain everything. He seems very anxious to help you with your problem. Yes, I think he's worth another chance. Well, all right, Herbert, if you think I should. At least it'll be a novelty seeing him alone. She'll see you at the store this evening. Good, good. Oh, uh, goodbye, goodbye. And thanks, thanks very much indeed. <laughs> than any executive I've ever seen. And save that line for Booby Wooby. She might appreciate it, and I don't. 
Oh, I wish I'd brought an overcoat. The chill is quite penetrating. Mr. Collins said that you wanted to see me. Yes. Well, I suppose you have sufficient reason for your attitude. I hear that you're in trouble and I want to help you. At least, I, I want to try. I'm afraid you're a little bit late with this grand gesture. Look, could we make believe that we never saw each other before our meeting when you, uh, you nearly ran me down in your car? Malcolm, you haven't given me a minute's peace or happiness in the past five years. Yet you want me to forget all that and start on you. I'm afraid you cried wolf once too often. You hate being Mrs. Malcolm Scott, don't you? If you haven't anything further to say, I, I wish you'd go. Oh, I'm sorry. Now, about the store, how's it going? Oh, wonderfully. Simply marvelous. And why not, with all the attention you've given it? Frankly, I see no reason why we shouldn't accept Mulhausen's offer. Don't you think we ought to go into things a little more deeply before doing anything hasty? Well, the longer we wait, the less we'll get. The offer he gave us last month was cut in half. Oh? Miss Jones is here with the... Oh, send her in, please. Oh, good evening, Mr. Scott. Good evening. It's nice to see you back. Thank you. These are the sketches you asked for. Thank you. Would you like to see them? Oh, You can just leave them here. Here are the figures. You can look them over while I change. Oh, thank you. Um... Uh, how about uh, having a little dinner with me this evening to discuss the matter further? Oh. Well, um, how about tomorrow evening? Hmm. Well, uh, how about uh, a year from July the 4th? I'm sorry, but... I know. You have an engagement. <laughs> All right. much of a dinner after a hard day's work in the office. Well, I shan't have time for dinner. We're going to the opera tonight. Good evening, darling. Oh. Hello, Peter. You know my husband, Malcolm. This is Peter Ransom. How do you do? Oh. How do you do? Uh, well, if you two are uh, <laughs> going out, I suppose that I'd better uh, be running along because uh, you... Uh, uh, oh, my, my head. You, That's a husband's privilege. <laughs> As I said, it wasn't a good idea to bring you here in the Hungarian restaurant. You didn't eat anything. Oh, nothing. Not hungry. Mm -hmm. Would you like something else? Huh? Brandy, liqueur? Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm not a drinking man. What's the matter? Are you all right? <laughs> thank you, Matt. Paul, since you know her so well, can you suggest how I could help to make her forget all that? You, you remember what Casanova said? Huh? Huh? Casanova said the man... Um, um, a boom. Sure. <laughs> He said so many things I, I can't remember. Excuse me. Now I know what Casanova said. He said you never can tell about a woman. She's here. Hello. Hello. Uh, you alone? Well, what else did you expect to find here? Well, I thought perhaps your uh, handsome ransom might be here. Well, I thought you might be looking for your booby-woopy. Booby-woopy. Ooh, she gives me the creeps. 
If you're looking for the cigarettes, they're over here. Oh, thank you. Thank you. If you're looking for a light, it's over here, too. Oh, <laughs> everything seems to be over here. <laughs> yes. Everything is over here. Hmm. Yes, everything. Well, if you're just going to stand there. Well, uh, the fact of the matter is, I... Oh, aren't you glad to see me? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Of course I am. Certainly an odd way of showing it. Well, you see, it's just that, uh... Well? Uh, oh, thank you. Don't thank me. But well, can't you see I've done it? You have? But of course. That's our old signal. Oh, oh, so it is. <laughs> yes, uh, our old signal. <laughs> yes, silly. That means that we're through fighting. The war has ended. You know, I can't tell you how nice it is having you here with me. Uh, well, let's say our, our being here together. Oh, darling, it's... It's only been a question of how long I could go on being mad at you. Today I got a good example of your sister Venetia's temper. Oh, what? Oh, I don't know, something about uh, your being involved in some sort of a scheme with Mulhausen. Mulhausen? Oh, but that doesn't matter. I only knew that I had to see you. So I came here this afternoon and then when I saw you in that woman's arms... And, uh, and then you came to the office. What did you mean when you did that? When I kissed you? Well, I just meant that I uh, wanted to kiss you. Oh, oh just like that, huh? Uh, well, oh, I... Oh, darling, I... there's something I want to tell you. Huh? The real reason I came back was because I've been so lonely for you. The new you. I don't know where you got your new technique, but, but rather than be jealous, I'm grateful. Kissing well, you is no technique. It's the coordination that makes it so pleasant. Oh, well, then we must uh, coordinate more <laughs> often. Uh, uh, darling, you know, uh, you change so. You, you, you're so different. Well, I swear you're like a stranger. Well, uh, I am a stranger. Oh, I love you so much more for it. Now then, sit down. Mm -hmm. There. You've been through so much these last few days. Mr. Collins has told me all about it. Now, relax. Huh? Oh, but, uh... I, I, it's rather difficult to relax. I, I... Oh, you must let me take care of you. That isn't so bad, is it? No, but uh, I wish you'd let me get up. I feel silly, like... Oh, you didn't fidget so much. You'd enjoy it more. A glass of champagne. Oh, no, thank you. Last drink I had got me into all my trouble. Oh, darling. I'm so glad that you realize that now. Isn't this wonderful? Are you happy? Oh, never been happy in all my life. Let's celebrate tonight. Huh? You know, do the town, just the way we used to do. One dance at every nightclub. Oh, yes, yes, good idea. Come on. And, and, and then we'll, we'll go for a ride in the park in a handsome cab. Just like we did the night that you proposed to me. Oh, did I? Don't you remember? Yeah. Oh, yes, 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 of course. Splendid idea. Come on, come no, on. No, 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 not yet. First, I want you to do something for me. Oh? Huh? What? Play our song. Oh, oh, our song. Yes, yes, now, come on, darling. Look here, I, I, I can't play the piano. Oh, you're just a bashful little boy. I always have to coax you. Are you sure you wouldn't rather I uh, whistled for you? No, I want you to play our song. What, on the, on, on the... Piano? Oh, well, fresh out of Calabi's. Now sit down and stop storming. Yeah. Look here, w wouldn't you rather I played my new arrangement of chopsticks? No, our song. I can play chopsticks awfully hard. Stop being stubborn. Go on. Darling, sit down. You play the first half, and I'll play the second half. Play. Play.
are you doing? Hey? Oh, uh, I was just uh, admiring this little uh, doodad. <laughs> Let me take care of you. No, no, it feels much better, really. I can hardly feel it at all. Why, look, it, it isn't even discolored. No, but it must be swelling inwardly. I'll put a cold pack oh, on no, it. Oh, no, no, really, look, look, it's quite all right. I, now, I... You know, really, I... this is what I've hoped for all the time that I've been away. Oh? A loving husband and wife going upstairs like this. Oh. Arm in arm, at night, uh. leaving everything else behind. Uh, Adrian, look, look, look at me. Can't you see I'm not the same man? Yes, Angel. I said that's why I love you so much. Oh, I forgot to turn off the lights. You go on ahead. But you needn't bother about the lights. There are a house full of servants. Yes, uh, still, you, one never can tell, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. My keys, they must have <laughs> fallen out of my pocket. I, I'll just go and get them. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, yes, it is. My keys. <laughs> oh, darling. Uh, I've, I've been uh, thinking yes, dear. about Mulhausen. I can't understand that. There's a perfectly good business. Why it should go down like that? Because, after all, we've seen the statements and the receipts are good, and, and that a business like that should go uh, down and, and, and down. I mean, I, <laughs> because down. I think we all have checked with the... Darling, you're so sweet. Well, I've missed you so much. Oh, but I warn you, I'm not going to let you make the same mistake again. Oh? Whether you like it or not, from now on, you and I are together. Till death do us part. Oh. Oh, well, that uh, leaves me very little uh, choice in the matter, does it? <laughs> that leaves you no choice in the matter. What's the matter, dear? Uh, oh, oh, nothing, nothing. <laughs> Oh, yes, that is, the, uh, there is something. I've just remembered. I think I left a lighted cigarette downstairs in the living room. Oh, don't think about that. It's probably out by now. Unzip me, will you, darling? What? Unzip me, please. Oh. Uh, the window might be open. It only takes just a spark. It might fall on the carpet. Oh, darling, unzip me. Oh, uh, well, uh, first thing you know, the whole house may be ablaze. One of the servants will have found it. Thank you, my sweet. I shan't be a second. Me more. My thoughts are your snores. Oh, well, we can go back now. I've got a big day ahead of me. 
Couldn't you be so upset at home as you were here last night? Oh, you're a good fellow, Paul. I won't forget it as long as I live. I hope I live long enough to appreciate it. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Oh, Mrs. Scott asked me to give you this, sir. Mrs. Scott? Yes, sir. She left late last night. Well, that is early this morning. She took her bags with her. Good heavens, why? Why did she? Do you suppose it's because I left? But if you think it was because I left? Oh, now why did she do that? Oh, Paul, where do you suppose she's gone? Mm. Paul, Paul! Yes, sir? Paul, where do you think she's gone? M maybe to her apartment. Well, get her on the phone for me. Yes, sir. Oh. Hello? Yeah, get to me. Hello, hello. Is Mrs. Scott in? Oh, she isn't? Well, uh, as soon as she comes in, ask her to call her house, will you? Oh, if only I could make her understand. Are you treat her? She can't understand you. She's not booby booby. Paul, go to the best florist in town and get two dozen of the finest roses you can find. No, no, make it three dozen. Uh, no, four. All long stems. It's no, uh, wait, long, wait a minute. I'll write a note. Long, no. I think it's a little late for roses in the note. You do? Well, well, what am I to do? I, I can't go on without her. You can't go on without her. He sleeps in the back. He won't sleep in his own home. Oh, oh stop Can't. mumbling yourself. Now, listen, I have an appointment, a very important one. Now, you get Mrs. Scott, and when you've got her, ask her, oh, please, with her, beg anything, only get her here and keep her here. And as soon as I return, I'll explain everything. Please, take a little sleep, and then call her yourself. Oh, Paul, I have to straighten out a matter with Mr. Mulhausen. Now, do what you're told. There's a good fellow. Now, don't forget, shower her with flowers. I am afraid he's off again. Mrs. Scott's fate in this business cost her quite a tidy sum, didn't it? I judge we shared that together, hmm? Yes, but while you were throwing yours away, I didn't agree with your idea of pleasure, so I invested mine here. Hmm. That's why I'm able to swing this deal. Mr. Mulhausen, you have a heart of gold. And just as hard. What do you mean? I mean that I refuse to sign those papers. And I demand that you return every last cent of the money you stolen from the store. Well, if I were you, I'd be a little careful of what I say. You might have to eat your words. Malcolm is a check you forged for $25,000 using Lawrence Fox's name. What? That was a few years ago. Lawrence Fox was a good friend of your family. Naturally, he wouldn't prosecute you, but uh, since his death, his estate might not feel as he did. There must be some mistake. The mistake, Malcolm, is yours. You know, forgery is rather a serious crime. Oh, dear. I'd probably be doing society a favor if I turned you over to the police. Well, it was evidently rather foolish of me to try to cross you. I suppose I'll have to sign, eh? I think so. Yeah. Hey, stop that. What are you trying to do? That's mine. Give it back to me. Here, I've worked all my life for that. I, uh, hey, st spit that out. Spit that out. I want it. I paid my good money for that. That's the only evidence I have against you. Spit that out. I've got my good money in this. That's the only evidence I've got against you. Spit that out. You can't get away with this. Oh. Shame on you. Shame on you. I never expected this from a member of your class. Frankly, neither did I. But you told me I'd have to eat my words. So I did. I'm awfully disappointed in him. Ah, is she here? Adrian? No. Well, she didn't accept the flowers. For her, Malcolm Scott is dead. I know, I know, but what did she say about me? Scott's dead. Oh, of course he's dead, Paul. But, but didn't you ask her to let me explain? What did you tell her? Please, please, take a little sleep. Think of your nerves. Oh, I tell you, I... <laughs> oh, dear. I don't feel very well. Maybe it's something you eat. I will fix you up. I must get in touch with her. Hey. 
No, let me speak to Mrs. Scott, please. Ah, I know she's in and she's got to speak to me. Hello. Hello. Hello, 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 hello. She must realize that this is all a big mistake. No, 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 please let me finish. I, uh, I'm only trying to say... What? What? You're not Mr. Collins? Well, well why on earth didn't you say... Please, drink this. Oh. This will help you. I've tried everywhere. I can't find her. I think this time Mrs. Cut is finished. Fin and that's the way. Get me Miss Venetia Scott on the phone, sir. I've been fool enough to involve myself in straighten out her affairs. Hello? Yeah. Miss Scott? Yeah. Hello. Is this Miss Scott? Are you sure it's Miss Scott? Well, now, you sit down. Now, listen. I want you to have every member of the family here within one hour. Do you understand? That's right. I, I, and you tell them to bring their smelling salts with them, too. That's what we're trying to find out, whether he was Malcolm Scott or John Evans. This will be quite a shock to his partner, Mr. Phillips. You see, the deal Evans came here to set went through. I brought some pictures of Evans that might help us. I still don't see how I can help you. Well, we thought that... That is, are you certain that Mr. Scott is Mr. Scott or... But that's ridiculous. Of course it's Mr. Scott. Malcolm, dear, congratulations. Mr. Collins told us everything. Mel, we're proud of you again. Won't you sit down? Sit down. Now, before I begin... Oh, I beg your pardon. I haven't had much sleep. What I'm going to say will startle you so that... Please, don't anybody interrupt me until I've finished. I'm an intruder in your family. Oh, what perfect nonsense. You belong right here with us. Well, to begin with, I, I'm not Malcolm Scott. My name is John... John Evans. I just knew we'd do something like this. Sit down, please. You are not yourself. No, that's what I'm trying to tell them. I'm not myself. I mean, I am myself, only I, I'm not the self they, they think I am. You are so sleepy. You can do this later. Paul, remember your place. Now, now, all of you, listen to me. My name is John Evans. And I, I come from Puerto Rico. Not being a drinking man, it, it didn't take much to make me lose my bearings. You remember me, don't you? Hmm? You remember me, don't you? Hmm? No, oh, yes. No, no, who are you? Dr. Sims. Mm -hmm. Well, what about it? You remember you talked to him in the bathroom? Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, yes, you thought I was Scott, and I thought you were Scott. <laughs> yes, we never did find out, did we, until after we'd hung up? Who hung up, Evans or Scott? Why, Evans. Or Scott, or... I don't know, whoever I was at that time. Yes. Yes, of course. Elementary schizophrenia. I came from Puerto Rico on a business deal. But when it fell through, my partner advised me to, to swim back. A water fixation. What Dr. Eaglemeyer calls uh, hydrophilia. I once treated a retired rear admiral for it. Do you find speech difficult? I find yours impossible. Central aphasia. Tell us why you eat paper. Mm. Oh, I, I told Collins that in confidence. I oh, said not to mention it to anybody. Do you eat paper often? Mm. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Three or four newspapers a day if I'm hungry. In the final edition at night. <sighs> you, you don't think I'm crazy, oh, do please you? Please sit down. Uh, I just had a few more questions. You found yourself uh, like two personalities, yes? Yes. Yes, uh, 
Scott and, and myself. Alter ego complex, heightened by alcoholic stimulation. <laughs> now, did Mrs. Scott accept you as Mr. Scott or as Mr. Evans? Oh, look here, leave Mrs. Scott's name out of this one. Won't you please? Just cross your legs. Just like that. That's fine. Uh-oh. -uh. Hypoactive patella reflexes. Try this one, please. She stood at the door of the fish sauce shop feeling fairly foolish. Beg your pardon? She stood at the door of the fish sauce shop feeling fairly foolish. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's very good. Oh, excellent, excellent. Oh, I should have tried to swim back. It would have been much easier to swim back. Thanks very much. That proves conclusively that the victim was your husband. But that makes me a widow. Oh, gentlemen, I must give Mr. Evans the good news. Yes, I guess he'll be glad to know he's still alive. Yes, won't he? Goodbye. Goodbye. Mrs. Scott, Mrs. Scott, it's terrible. He's cuckoo, cuckoo. And he's, he, he's sleeping in a new kind of coat, like this. Oh, calm yourself. Now, what are you talking about? Dr. Cuckoo. Sims has been here and made a thorough examination. He decided Malcolm would be better off at the home. You, you mean they've taken him away? <laughs> there, there, now. You mustn't take it so much to heart. This has all been arranged for Malcolm's own good. You don't understand. The man that you sent away is a perfect stranger. His name is John Evans. It's my fault. It's my fault. He was so tired and he was so worried about you. And I took this like this and put it. And give it to him like this and he drank like this. But what is it? Sleeping pills. Huh? <laughs> what I did. Oh, Paul, I, Paul, come with me. What I did. Adrian, if you go to him now, you'll be making an awful mistake. If I don't go to him now, I'll be making an awful mistake. But the door by him, but I did, but I did, but I did. Come on, did, come on. Did, did. Did. Oh, come on. Mm. <sighs> Paul, hurry up. We've got to get out of here. Yeah. Come on, darling. Oh. Help yourself a little bit. <laughs> This is strictly a case of things I never knew till now. Oh, darling, I tried to tell the family they had you all wrong. They just wouldn't understand. But I, for one, appreciate all you've done. This is the most comfortable bed I've ever slept on. Just can't get it undone. If you could see your way clear to forgive us. I love Adrian Scott. She's worth a dozen booby woobies. Her skull was fractured by a ping pong ball. Well, I wish Adrian were on this rocking chair with me. Sorry, Mr. Scott. And don't call me Mr. Scott. From now on, I want to be called by my right name, John Evans. Yes, yes, Mr. John Evans. And soon I hope you'll be able to call me Mrs. John Evans. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Darling. Oh, won't you get me out of this thing? Mm -mm. You're stuck for the rest of your life. Thank you. 